everyone, I'm Juhan Plon, and in this video, I'm going to make this bench. So here's my idea. Basically, like a normal bench, four legs and a seat, but one end is going to be segmented to make a curved backrest. The legs are going to be round and tapered, but we'll get to that later. I'll start by making this piece. For this project, I'm going to be using poplar. I had never used poplar before, but I found that it's really easy to work with, and it looks good too. After the pieces for the backrest were cut to the rough length and plain smooth, I tilted my table saw blade over 5 degrees so that I could start cutting my pieces to their finished widths, which was about 2 inches wide. With all the pieces cut, I could glue them up, and for that, I'm only going to be using painter's tape as the clamp. The painter's tape gives clamping pressure and keeps all the pieces together while the glue dries. With the curved part of the back drying, I could start working on these pieces, which are basically just butt joints. This is the final piece to the backrest. I did as much of this cut as I could on the table saw, then switched over to the jigsaw to finish off the rest of the curve. This joint was kind of tricky. I lined the rounded piece up to the edge of a workbench, then used my contour gauge to copy a line onto the board being attached to it. Then I cut the notch out with a handsaw. After my pieces were cut, I assembled the two 90 degree joints using glue and screws. You can see that I drilled a 3 8 inch hole into the board before gluing and screwing the two pieces together. This is for a dowel that will hide the screws and make it look like I used traditional joinery instead of screws.
For the other two joints that weren't 90 degrees, I used pocket holes. You'll never really see these in the finished piece. Now I'll start to work on the legs. The blanks will need to be about two and a half inches wide, so I glued up two two inch thick pieces for each leg. While the leg blanks dry, I'll keep working on the backrest. First, I marked a line, then cut the curve with the jigsaw. With the curve cut, I could start power carving it. I brought it outside because it was going to get really dusty. For carving, I'm using my angle grinder with a 40 grit sanding disc on it. This made really quick work of smoothing out all the curves and rounding over all the edges. After I was finished carving, I filled any gaps between the boards with glue and sawdust. I found that if you sand everything right after you fill the gaps, it really makes the gap disappear. So I sanded everything to 220 grit with my random orbit sander. I used my oscillating tool with a sanding attachment to sand the inside of the curve. Now I can work on the seat part of the bench. For this, I'm just using a piece of 3 quarter inch plywood. First, I mark the curve, then cut it out on the bandsaw. Then I can attach this piece using pocket holes. You can see here that I cut some spacers so that the plywood sat flush with the frame of the bench. This ended up being a pretty tight fit.
Now I could get back to the legs. I started out by cutting the ends flush, running them through the planer, and squaring them up on the table saw. I want the legs to be round and tapered. I don't have a lathe in the shop, so I'm going to turn them on the table saw using a drill. I've seen this method done before on YouTube and decided to try it out. I made a jig which basically consists of two verticals and a piece of quarter inch plywood. One vertical has a nail in it and the other has a hole for a bolt that gets chucked up into a drill. This jig is a lot like the one Michael Alm made on his channel. The leg needs a nut in one side to take the bolt that gets put into the drill, so here is my first idea for that. After that, I removed most of the material by cutting off the corners. After a test, I found that the hexagon nut didn't work, so I plugged the hole and instead switched out the hexagon nut for a T-nut. This ended up working. Now they are ready to be turned in the table saw. One end of the leg spins freely on a nail, and the other end gets a bolt that is chucked up into the drill. I started by removing most of the material without spinning the leg. You can see that my table saw blade was just tall enough to do this. Then for the final pass, I turned the drill on and ran it through the blade. After all the legs were cut, I used a block plane to remove any high points, then sanded them to 220 grit. To attach the legs to the bench, I used glue and dowels. My clamps weren't deep enough to reach any of the legs, so I had to get a little creative. I ended up using duct tape to hold some of them down. I came back the next day and tested it out. The whole thing had a little bit of wobble, so I added some stretchers between the legs using glue and pocket holes.
Before finishing, I ran over everything one last time with 220 grit sandpaper and wiped it down with a tack cloth. I decided to stain this, and poplar is fairly soft, so I applied a coat of pre-stained conditioner. For the stain, I'm using a mixture of dark brown and red. Finally, I applied three coats of water-based polyurethane and sanded between coats. So here it is. I'm really happy with how it came out. It looks good, it's sturdy, and it's actually comfortable too, which I wasn't sure about. I was planning on adding a cushion on the seat part of the bench, but I really don't think it needs it anymore. I might still do that in the future though, I'm not sure. Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so that you get notified every time I post. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.